Yes, child, it is Shop Talk with Shay. Oh my goodness. Pull you up a seat? Pour you some tea? Shoot, you might as well get your hair done while you're at it with your nappy hair cell. Shoot, this is the place where ratchet meets classy. Ooh, girl, Shop Talk with Shay. Go on, tell him, girl. Good afternoon. It is Sean Smash Jet, and I am back in the building with Shop Talk with Shay. And I'm acting like I have a little bit of sense today. Welcome to the show. Thank you for uh, checking us out today on The Real 1100. Uh, today is going to be amazing. We have a jam packed show, and I can't wait to explain everything that is going on. But before I say that, I want to say, for those of you who are not following me on all social media, check out Shop Talk with Shay, hashtag Shop Talk with Shay. Follow Wealthy Divas, all of that. You'll find out everything that we're doing. But Shop Talk with Shay goes in the beauty in the barbershops. We talk about everything that you talk about, but we give a little bit of a solution. So excited um, to be with you on today. Um, we have a very special show um, in place for today. And I'm going to be having some guests call in to talk with us about Father's Day um, and fatherhood. Father's Day is super important, and it's one of those things where um, a lot of people talk about Mother's Day, but they don't necessarily talk about Father's Day as much, and, you know, you just get the brint of it. But if you are listening to me for the first time, I am Shay with Shop Talk with Shay. And what I do is typically we go into the beauty and the barber salons on um, Saturday morning, and we talk about whatever it is that you are talking about for that week. And that can be literally spilling the tea from finances to relationships to politics to sports, whatever they're talking about in the beauty and the barber salon. Um, Beauty in the Barbershop, that's what we're talking about um, that week. But this week is such a fantastic week for fathers that I just wanted to have the conversation. And um, one of the things that um, I felt like because of this day was important to me is being um, a mom and really not having a, a father as much as I was expecting, you know, um, we're in one of those scenarios where um, uh, we're in one of those scenarios where a father is um, literally, he can be in the household, he can be outside of the household, he can be um, on the side, you have some fathers who are in prison, it, it's just a whole lot of different scenarios that can take place. Um, but I want to be able to have that conversation on literally what is the state of fatherhood. And um, we're going to, I have five special guests today. Um, and I, I'm going to wait for them all to, um, one of them probably hopefully should be there shortly. Um, oh, Lord. And um, Lord, I lost. Um, and that this conversation is, is going to be super important, but it's going to be actually um, very nice. Okay, so what I want to do is introduce you to one of my favorite folks, and that is Mr. Hank Stewart. Mr. Hank Stewart is super important to me, not only because of who he is, but just his whole persona, just everything about him. If you watch this man, I've watched him. I've been in different scenarios with him. And I have had the pleasure of, um, being, of being a part of his foundation. He is so fantastic. But what I love about Hank is Hank does not pull any punches. He does not sugarcoat anything. He's going to let you have it like it is. And that's why I love having him on Sh um, Shop Talk with Shay. And this conversation um, to me, of why do fathers matter? What, what is it so important about fatherhood? And what are we missing today that we can do, do differently? Hank, are you there? I'm here. Thank you, Shay. Hey. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you fantastic. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, Thank you for I, having you are, 
you are one of those folks I can count on to give me the truth. And I've got some questions today that, you know, to me, you are uh, a little bit half of me because you get out in your community. You're not scared to punch it up. You, you know, I, I go down to board meetings, and people are just not doing that. So I just wanted to have that conversation of, you know, where is fatherhood going? Is it really mattering? I mean, what we saw as fathers back in the day, they had all the scenarios, oh, Papa was a Rolling Stone, et cetera, but Dad was there regardless. And then some people, Dad was never there. And those particular things have resided in them, in, into them today and made them who they are, whether their father was present or not. But it did take a stronghold. So I just wanted to have that little bit of a conversation. I'm not going to keep you long on, you know, what fatherhood means to you. And does do well, fathers really matter? Well, first of all, let me thank you again for having me, Shay. Well, yeah, of course fathers matter because you can't have a child without a father. So that in itself, <laughs> that's, that's the that's the first thing is that uh, like you can't have a, uh, you know, as, as there's no woman, there's no birth. So both matter, you know, uh, to the child. I think um, I think we have to stop buying into some of the stereotypical things. Papa was Rolling Stone, you know. I, how many men probably wouldn't even think about being a Rolling Stone until they heard the song? You know, that's why we have to be real careful about what we feed our souls with, you know, um, on a daily basis, you know, because some of this stuff, um, it starts to create, you know, that's why a lot of times in in, in shootings, people say, you know, we have to be careful because then we'll have copycats. You know, if Mm -hmm. you start, you got the the shooter, then all of a sudden you got a whole bunch of people trying to copy what the shooter did. Um, We have to be careful about what we put out in the form of songs and movies and books and all kind of other things because I think we're creating copycats not because that's what they want to be that's what they're hearing. Uh, I remember going uh, to a, a school once and a little girl we went around the room and you know, we had a career day and we asked a little girl all the kids around the room what they want to be and this one little girl said I want to be a basketball wife because that's mm. what she saw on TV. You understand? So we wow. have to be real careful about that. Uh, I, I, but back to the father piece, I think. Say father is so important. I mean, for little girls, you know, that's the first uh, man that should love her, you know, and, 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 and treat her like a queen so she knows how to be treated. So when a little knucklehead comes up, she don't run out the door. When he bumps the horn, he has to come and knock on the door, and a father would teach her that. You know, open the door for her, send her, her flowers because he see the way, he, the way father treats mama. You know, even when they're not together, he, he shows the mother respect. You know what I mean? So... Uh, I, you, there's so many lessons that comes from men being fathers, um, and I think the other thing too, women have to be uh, take some ownership in this too. You know, you got a whole lot of women dating men who they know are no good, and yet you're gonna have a baby with them. Right. You know what I mean? Right. You're dating a guy who's got two kids that you know about, and then you find out about another two more, and he ain't taking care of the two that you found out about, and you want them. He's gonna take care of the child that y'all have together. You know, you need to run. That's those are signs for running, not not staying. You know, so but for some I, I reason, think fatherhood. I'm sorry. Oh no, but but for some reason they stay and they think they can change that man. They think that whatever he is do he did with them, that was just because that was those women. He's not going to do the same with my child. That's the that's the scenario they run with, which is crazy. Absolutely and let's see crazy. how that works out. And let's see how right. that works out for you. You know. Like I said, you, you you know you found out about two more children that you didn't know about. He told you about two, and you and you found about three more that you didn't know about. And he wants to claim they ain't, there's not his. And you know, but anyway, father, it's just one of the most beautiful things in the world because it, it gives you it's a daily gift. You know, you you you're constantly um, enjoying that daily gift of looking at your children or your child, and um, and I, it's nothing better, you know. Uh, it's nothing better. I mean, just providing. I think as a father and as a as a man, you know, for me the big thing was I wanted to provide and I wanted to protect my child. You know, that Absolutely. that was big to me. I wanted to make sure that he had everything that he needed and nobody messed with him. You know, uh, so provide and protect, and that's what that's what who we are. I think that's what that's how we're wired. Like women are nurturers, and y'all want to take care of things. Y'all like the little sprinkles and da 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 da. Yes, that's who y'all are. Y'all are. Nurtures, y'all want to take care of things. Men, we we want to go out and, you know, the way we were wired. I don't know how this stuff is changing, but we're wired to protect and provide. 
Well, I'm glad you said that because I have some new statistics from just last year on how men have have changed over the years. Um, now men are sick, the the numbers are increasing. American uh, fathers have actually increased the time they spend with their children on a work day by 65% on average. Like that's a new thing. Then single parent households that are of men have changed by 50%. Like that has changed. You know, before the court would always give the woman um, the 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 um, support and she would have to, you know, get the child support, et cetera. But men are now being single parent households. Um, and then work-life balance. It was always told that guys would be the ones who would stay at work, and but now men are stepping up. Um, we still have 10% incarceration of, of parents. That is not um, changing. But we have switched a little bit on gender roles. Seventy-four percent of men um, agree that men should earn money and women should take care of the home. Where in in family in 1977, only 40 percent of the men agreed to that. So they've they've changed a little bit on that. And then 64 percent of all the men are now as providers, like they are the complete financial supporter. Um, and then lastly, but not uh, least, 40 percent. Are, are more are the caregiving responsibility associated with positive o- outcomes in children's test scores and cognitive achievement. And that's the one of the things that I noticed that you are all about. You are down, you're like me. You're down there at those board. Um, you're at the PTA meetings. You're, you're trying to be exactly, even though if, even if our kids are no longer available in the, in the system, we're still here um, making a difference, and I think that those numbers um, re- relate that it is something powerful and something positive going on in the state of fatherhood. So, what do you say about those so far? And then I'm not going to hold well, you too think, much longer. I, but. And I think, and I think that's a great. I'm glad those statistics. I would love to know the breakup of uh, the breakdown of um, in race and things of that nature too, because I, you know, okay. because you know the. Um, you know, uh, one of my favorite quotes uh, is, is a quote that says, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, and you hear it when people are going through rehab, you know, the mm-hmm. first step to recover is admitting there's a problem. So unless you can deal with real raw numbers, you know what I mean, numbers that have not been skewed, but just real true numbers, and then we can really see where that growth is and then start talking about how that growth has up uh, and how do we continue those trends to move, you know, in a positive direction. Uh, and I, I think those are awesome. You know, I think though, and I'm not, and I'm not questioning. I just would like to see the breakdown of what African American men numbers uh, look like on that. So, uh, uh, so we can continue to, if, you know, if there's some more work that we could, we need to be doing, then we need to be heading in that direction. If there's, uh, if there's an opportunity for us to really just uh, keep driving those numbers uh, upward, then we need to do that. Well, absolutely, and I will be the first to tell you, Hank, you probably don't even realize how many people you encourage and you make it okay for men to be able to go to a PTA or to be able to go to a community board meeting like it's not some, nothing soft about that because I've seen people say, well, dang, you know, I see Hank posted, he's at the so-and-so, oh, it's all right for us to go to that because in the past men thought, okay, that's supposed to be a woman's thing to go to the PTA and da 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 but people like you who are showing not on just by you saying it, but you're actually showing you are there. I've seen you do live feed from different things to say, hey, I'm here. Where, where are you? Get, get in place. And, and I've um, talked with gentlemen who I know for sure realized that's what you were doing, and then all of a sudden, you know, they're, they're saying, okay, it is cool to do this, whereas um, in the past, that was unheard of. You know, when, when you went to a PTA meeting, you never saw men, but now we're seeing them. But if we have an example, if someone sees an example and you are being that, so I really, really appreciate you for doing that. Well, thank you, Shay. I think you're giving me more credit than I deserve, but I really appreciate it. I just, <laughs> I'm just wanted to be, I just want to be the change that I want to see. You know what I mean? I want to be the change that I want to see. And I don't want to sit here and talk about what is wrong without, you know, being there to help correct it and and move it move the agenda forward, and so you know I don't want to be that guy who's on on Facebook or social media, you know, blasting. But when it comes to well, 
Were you at the school board? And then I like being informed. Right. I mm-hmm. remember one time being in a conversation with some folk, and um, and they were talking, and it was something that had aired uh, that was in the paper, and I had not read it and did not know about it. And all these, it, w- it was obviously something pretty big. I can't remember what it was. And mm-hmm. I felt dumb because I couldn't even communicate on the on the topic. And so one right. of the things that I get up and do is I read the paper every single day, and I, you know, I look at MSNBC or CNN, and you know, and Fox if need be, because I want to know what's happening. You know, I want to be able to speak to those two issues. And and so going to the school board and going to PTA meetings and being in classrooms, you can talk firsthand about what you're seeing, not by what you hear about. You know, but you can actually you, you can actually talk firsthand about the issues and um. And I, you know, and then we have a foundation. You know, Shay, we have a foundation, and so, um, we, you know, to be able to go out there and advocate on behalf of children, you got to have that, got got to know where, where the issues are and where they're being discussed, and and so a lot of times, you know, in schools and and and, and board meetings and and down at the Capitol, down at county commissioner meetings, that's where the decisions are being made. I mean, they're being right. Made. I, I'm not condoning. I'm gonna say this. I'm not condoning, and this is very controversial. Uh, co- controversial, and I'm gonna say mm-hmm. it anyway because it, it needs to be said. I'm definitely not condoning the guy who shot at the police officers. I mean, at the uh, legislators yesterday in, in D.C. Mm-hmm. Not as I'm not. I'm not condoning. There is no way to condone that whatsoever. And I heard a legislator say, "How can he come down here and shoot at us? He don't even know us." You know, they don't even know and you're trying to kill us. And immediately in my mind, I said, but you're making decisions as a legislator that affects us by taking health care and all that. When you don't know us and you're affecting right. our lives. Right. When you take away health insurance, you don't know us, but yet you're taking it away from us. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, Absolutely. Um, you know, we, I mean, we just, but, but when you're engaged, you understand these things and you can, and you can combat them because some, because I, I, I really believe that legislator thought he was saying the right thing. How can somebody come down here and shoot at us and my kids mm-hmm. are here? But every single day you, you vote on something that affects millions of people, millions of people. And they don't even ask. And it's not. And they the, don't even ask. And they don't even ask. <laughs> exactly. Right. right. You affect, when you, when you, when you hit that little button saying, you know, uh, repeal Obamacare. You affected my mm-hmm. life. <laughs> you know, you changed my life. You wow. know, or when you cut you cut something for when you when you vote that to strike down uh, the Voters' Right Act, you affect my life as a black man. You affect me. So absolutely. I mean, you know, people are not always seeing the way you know seeing the way, and I'm not condoning the guy. I'm definitely not condoning because he was wrong, wrong. But it's also wrong to sit there and vote and place in laws to have the right to vote. You're cutting Absolutely. education, cutting but you're cutting funds to education to vote. She, they're they're cutting billions of dollars in education, billion. You ain't look at me when you when you when you voted no, and you and those cuts are coming down. Absolutely, you're affecting my life. <laughs> the, I mean, this is such a that is such a good conversation, and I want us to closer um, when we get a little bit in the next uh, couple of months to have that conversation, Hank, and I'd love for you to come back because you are well-versed like me when it comes to that. A lot of times I'm talking to people and they, they don't have a clue what I'm talking about because they're not even looking at that type of thing. You know, they vote once every four years, but they have no clue. They're not super involved in it. But I, I love, love, love the conversation we've had today. Um, how can they reach you on your social media and see exactly what you're doing? Spread the word. Most of them already know who the uh, infamous Hank Stewart is, so go for it. Uh, it's it's real simple. It's hankstewart.net. It's my website. Uh, you can send emails through that. I'm on social media, uh, uh, Facebook. Uh, I have two pages, both of them are Max said. I think I just started another page, a group page. <laughs> so that was in this. So, uh, that's pretty cool, awesome. and we have um, uh, Twitter and uh, you know at Hank Stewart's uh, Instagram, you know. So we we have all of those pages up and uh, being monitored. Uh, 
So yeah, and that's, that's how you we get have touch- something going down next month. Tell them about that, Hank, before yeah. you jump off. Yeah. And white linen, <laughs> white linen, July 27th, 28th, 29th. Right. We we gonna have Buy it's gonna tickets. be please get it. Get your ticket. The hotel is booked out, but we have another hotel next right next door, the Hilton Gardens Inn, a ninety nine dollar room rate right down in Peachtree City. Go to HankStewart.net. We have Howard Hewitt, Mike Phillips, Sandy Red, MC Lightfoot. We have a casino night. We have a soundless party. Fashion show, Bray Leon. If you've never seen him, a beast. DJ Lonnie Love, you know, uh, day party around the pool. Congressman John Lewis and Dr. C.T. Vivian in the discussion. Uh, it's just, it's, it's just so much. He's so having a conversation with Dr. Vivian. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's, what, that's what happens. Yes, oh, right. that's and, what and, happens. That, and that, and that uh, casino night on Friday oh, night, that's going to be I'm so, so much. Excited. That's going to be so much fun. I mean, we got folk coming in from everywhere. It's going to be a lot of fun. And it benefits the Stewart Foundation. We gave away 23 scholarships last year, giving away some mm-hmm. more scholarships this year. We do programs. We're taking our kids to the mountains. You're going uh, yeah. to the mountains next mm-hmm. week, uh, our youth leadership retreat. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's a lot. We, we do a lot with that little bit. It's true to two fish and five loaves of bread once we get this money, oh, man. Real. You know, and, uh, <laughs> and it's so, but we need you to buy a ticket. And if you can't buy a ticket, if you can't Still come, can. still buy. Yeah. Still buy a ticket. If there you can't, you know. I mean, I, I buy this book CDs all the time. I, I got so many books, Yolanda and, and mm-hmm. Shay, that I've never read or CDs I've never just played. Supporting so, somebody. Just supporting somebody. You understand my point? And especially if you, I know it's going towards something good. So thank you for giving me well, that. Give me some I, it's coming Juneteenth in Atlanta. It is a three day event. It is at Mosley Park. Mm-hmm. And, and she'll be in every it, backyard. <laughs> Should be, in, should, should be in, in every backyard, backyard. Yeah. But and they have they have been celebrating in Atlanta, and a long and time. even though the history of it stems to Texas, right? Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. but hopefully he'll tell us. People all don't that. understand. Well, can we tell them what, yeah, what it meant? Because te- uh, Juneteenth was. You know, Emancipation Proclamation was in 19, uh, 1863, mm-hmm. and we were free. Suppose we're out. I, I shouldn't say Abraham Lincoln free black folk. He really just let us go. Mm. You know what I mean? There's a major <laughs> difference. Because if we were free, we wouldn't need the 13th, 14th, and the 15th Amendment. Amendments, right. right. You with me? But right. anyway, he let us go on the 18th, uh, 1863, January the 1st. Well, six a lot African Americans in Texas didn't find out until June right. that they were free. Was it a year later or, uh, yeah, or six it was, months? It was six months. It was six like months. six months. So okay. you were freed in 1863, and then six months later, when everybody else was free, they just found right. out uh, African Americans in June, and, and the slave owners didn't tell them. Of course, they worked. And, and, they, and a lot of people don't know that there were people actually right here in Georgia that still, still didn't, worked. still no, mm-hmm. still didn't know. No, okay. Right. Because uh, when I remember when I first started blogging, there was a, a young lady that she was trying to raise money for these buses, mm-hmm. and she would go into very rural areas of Georgia to literally free people wow. and some of the conditions of their homes, you know, mm-hmm. we're talking about ice on the floors. It's, it wow. was, it's amazing mm-hmm. when you think of where we are, but mm-hmm. go ahead. Okay. So um, we have our caller on the line now. We'll go ahead and get him on. You there? Well, we are back. We are back. And I wanted you guys to hear from who we have been talking about this hour, and that is Mr. Julian. We call him Julian the General. How about that? But he is one of the major components for Juneteenth Atlanta. It is a three-day black historic music festival and parade, one of the biggest in the country, I would say. And I just want to get some feedback from you, why you guys did it, um, what makes you do it um, every year, and how can we uh, be a part to help you celebrate again this year? Wow. Thank you so much, Shay, for having me on to share more information about this festival and why we do it. Uh, uh, The history of of Juneteenth is on June 19th, 1965, federal troops arrived in Galveston, Texas, to enforce the Emancipation Proclamation, which freed enslaved Africans in America. And so this is the 4th of July for black people in America, because on 4th of July, 1776, black people were still on the plantation. And so we honor our ancestors by doing this every year. Not only uh, for doing uh, honoring our ancestors, it's also a call to action to bring uh, politicians involved because it was l- federal legislation that implemented that freedom. And so we also need our politicians to work to heal and build our communities. It also helps us to uh, set an opportunity to celebrate our culture through music, um, through dance, uh, through business, by having vendors from all around the nation and within the African diaspora present at Mosley Park. 
Um, we're doing a parade on June 16th from no, uh, Mars Brown College to Mosby Park up MLK Drive. And mm-hmm. what we need you all to do is to continue to advocate how you're doing. Mm-hmm. You can get a float in a parade. You can participate in a parade. Oh, I need to you know? get a float. <laughs> I'm sorry, Julia. I got excited about that. Oh, no, it's, it's all it's okay. We thank you for your, you know, excitement. Um, uh, you can get a float in the parade. Um, you can uh, uh, um, be a vendor at the uh, the Juneteenth Marketplace, is which is going to be at Mosley Park, a fabulous park with, with beautiful space, beautiful green space, and we're going to have an awesome stage with some awesome performers and. This is our, our time to shine our culture. Well, awesome, awesome. Listen, I look forward to speaking with you in the next couple of weeks. I know you're coming in and uh, sharing with us even more. I can't wait to see you. And we will be at this event. So come out, everyone, and we'll give you some information here shortly on how you can get involved. But I wanted to make sure I got Julian on today. And uh, thank you for being a part of Shop Talk with Shady. You're welcome. Have a good thank one. Thank you for having me. Good day. Um, right, right. Well, we're going to carry this conversation on into the other half, but we must take a break before they shoot me off the air and say, <laughs> lady, you know you have to take a break. It is the responsibility of Shop Talk. So we will be back with a great conversation. Hey, call us at 404-603-8770. Tell us what you think. Give us what you guys think. We're, we've gone, we're going to go into Juneteenth here in a second, but it's Shop Talk with Shay on the Real 11. More than 90 days of this year has passed. Are you still in the same place financially than you were last year? If the answer is yes, I will encourage you to call 618-355-1629 or visit realeasytodo.info to make the true change you've been waiting for. Want to get out of the rat race and medial jobs? At Wealthy Divas, you can. By learning wealth creation, budgeting, credit management, assessment protection, financial workshops, webinars, and so much more. Live your best life yet. Check out the website at thewealthydivas.com or by calling 404-491-9311. Join Shop Talk with Shay as we partner with celebrity ambassador Carla Stevens with Wellspring Living. Please get involved and help us as we raise awareness in the fight against sex trafficking, this ever-growing modern-day slavery. Call 404-491-9311. Hello, and we are back. It is Sean Smashjet with Shop Talk with Shay on the real 1100 so thank you for listening to us today and again we are celebrating fathers but as i always tell you shop talk with shay is not just about what you guys are talking about in the beauty in the barbershop we shop we are providing a solution and so today we have a solution that i know all of you are going to want to hear about one this incredible amazing woman saw an issue and decided to do something about it because it's one of those things where we all hear about it. Everybody reacts about it. When you're in the beauty in the barbershop, folks, are, you'll hear them talking about, man, this lady got my child support and I can't see my kids. Or you hear them talking about the woman on the other end about her dead beat, uh, baby daddy, etc. There's always something being spoken about the father. And today we've given you some incredible stories of some amazing fathers. But I also want to provide uh, a solution for some things that I see happening out in the industry, out in America. Heck, probably worldwide for all we know. But I am so blessed to have Tori J. Evans Barton in the building with us from the uh, fatherless generation. I was about to mess it all up, Dr. Tori. <laughs> but the, the, but the don't ja- mess it up. But the Jack, don't mess it up. The whole situation up real quick, fast, in a hurry. But the fatherless uh, generation uh, foundation. Uh, she is one awesome, awesome uh, lady. Tell, welcome to the show. 
Just, just welcome, Thanks welcome, for welcome. Having me, sir. You're welcome. I appreciate you calling and, and letting me come on and, well, and share who I am and what I do and what we have going on. Well, I have. We have been so blessed to have you on Shop Talk um, in mm-hmm. the past uh, with the Fatherless Generation Foundation. But uh, I, uh, I told you <laughs> earlier that I'm always paying attention you, to you. Some would call it stalking, but. Uh, I'm always paying attention to what you're doing and and because I'm always um, inspired and impressed by amazing women who see something, see find a solution and don't just do you know talk about it. They're actually being about it. And you have set up a foundation. Um, that is doing some incredible things. And I want them to know all about that. And then, of course, we've got to talk about what you have coming up. But tell them about you, um, your foundation, and what made you start it. Okay. Well, you know, it's like what you said earlier. You see a situation and you find a solution. So often we see a situation and we just talk about it. Mm -hmm. And so I had a situation where I was growing up without my biological father. I'd grown up without him, and I was 31 years old when I decided to make a change and go find him. Mm. And then at 31, um, locating him, finding out who I am through him, Uh DNA, because that that matters. Okay. Um, there were things that I was doing that I wasn't sure about and I couldn't understand because I didn't see it on my mother's side. But then I meet my father and it's like, oh, it made me make sense. And so meeting him gave me an identity mm. and it made my walk in life make sense. And so meeting my dad caused me to say, you know what, I believe there are other individuals like me out there. And I will not say that that was totally my idea. It was not. I'm a woman of God. And that came, that just dropped in my spirit one day. Just, wow. You need to start the Fatherless Generation Foundation. And I was like, what is that? And so the more I thought and figured it out, it's what I do now. And I get to reunite fatherless children with their biological fathers. And then we provide programs and services that help support and even elevate that conversation around family values and, and fatherhood. So often okay. you're talking about it in, mm-hmm. you know, in the beauty salon or yeah. in the barbershop. And, um, we want to elevate that conversation beyond talk into solutions. And so I get to daily, on a daily basis, reunite kids with their fathers. We've now um, accomplished 2,500, and I think the number I got today was 2,589. I believe that's the number that they hit me um, with as they tallied them up um, wow. for the week. And so wow, I love what I do on a day-to-day basis. and. I am currently in Baton Rouge doing that very same thing and meeting with clients and networking with attorneys to get dads what they need. Wow. So tell us, I need you to, uh, as as they would say, dig deeper. Go, let, let's dive into dig this deeper. deeper. Yes, let's go okay. to this a little okay. deeper. Um, mm-hmm. So what I hear is you'll hear people say, and especially on uh, my end for a person who works with sex traffic victims, a lot of times people want to throw the the dart at, oh, this girl is a runaway, or this girl is a this. They all want to have always want to have a stigma uh, attached to what would make a child be a sex traffic victim. Well, majority of the time, those girls are um, can be said to have have be a part of the fatherless fatherless generation um, because you do have a proportion of girls who and boys let's I always try to make sure I mm-hmm. say that people automatically think it's just girls but yep you have a portion of girls who don't know what it's like to be fathered they don't know um their biological father they some of them have never met them or there isn't a father in the home or or they only know what their mother told them about their father and so they don't see all the tricks to the trade of sex trafficking. They don't know when a man's saying this or saying that, that he's really trying to do this or that because they don't have that man to say, oh, 
hold on, what, what did they say? That sounds like this. So I'm always interested in what you're doing because I think they tie. You know, I think there's a, there's a conversation in between there. Um, a lot of my girls come from divorced homes or just straight out dysfunctional homes. And uh, t- uh, on, on, uh, on another end, they come out of foster care. So when I look at the fatherless generation, I think, hey, those are all a portion of the of the girls that I'm dealing with. And so how do you, one, begin, if someone wants to come to you, how do you begin to say, or, or the, how does that conversation start? What is the process? How about that? Well, if we're talking about the kids, so let's talk about the kids and let's talk about the sex trafficking thing. Okay. For the longest, you know, it's sad that people join nonprofits mm-hmm. in a way that's kind of like a bandwagon. It's like a fashion. It's like a trend. And so there was a moment when fatherlessness was, ha- was kind of getting the conversation and then sex trafficking came forth and people tried to abandon the conversation around fatherlessness as if they had nothing to do with one another. Right. But if you look at the statistics, I think it's like 85% of, of individuals who are in sex trafficking come from fatherless homes. Yep. And so how can you ignore fatherless conversation when in many ways fatherlessness is the root of sex, why sex trafficking is happening? I'm mm-hmm. not saying there aren't dads out there who, you know, have done some things that aren't right. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is when you can look at that and say these individuals are parentless, fatherless, in, like you said, dysfunctional situations, why are we ignoring the conversation and the obvious around them not having a male role model or father in the home? And we are. And we have to bring children to a place where they get a mentor, they get a male role model, um, so that they can know, as you called it, you know, I'm going to call it running game. Mm -hmm. Um, The men are out here running game, and so they don't understand the language or the lingo. Men are running game on grown women because they don't understand the lingo. Honey, let's not. Don't even get me started (laughs) because I had some game trying to be ran on me yesterday, and I was like, hmm, that's interesting. But But see, you didn't bite. No, because I looked. (laughs) We have to teach young girls, and we have to have – places where they can go. One aspect of our organization that many people don't know about is um, our husband and wife mentor teams. We work them through churches. And so we have places where kids can go and they have a two-parent household in front of them. Wow. Not the single male, not the single female. I love big brothers and big sisters, but we wanted to give children an opportunity to see a two-parent home. And so that kind of teaches you what you need to know. And, you know, how do you connect with us? You know, it's going to be the Boys and Girls Clubs. We're starting to work with um, the YMCA and different community centers in Metro Atlanta um, where we know kids are going to be who are at-risk youth or we know are growing up in fatherless homes. And that will start happening more um, as the summer progresses and the 2018-2019 school year comes into play. Listen, people don't understand that that conversation needs to start happening in the summer. They just think that things are just supposed to jump off in August and September as kids are going back. They're like, oh, aha. And I'm like, you have to start preparing for that now. <laughs> in, you got to prepare now. It should have been prepared, start preparing for in April for the fall. <laughs> but as usual, we're always Johnny come lately. So I really appreciate um, you saying that. Um, how, okay, so if I decide, I say, um, you know what, I'm, uh, I'm my child, I have no idea where their parent is, how do you go about putting children back with fathers? What is the process behind that? Is it uh, a mother calling you or is it a father calling you saying, look, I haven't seen my child? Where is the, it, where's the, the, the process of it? <coughs> When they really what happens is we'll get a call and they begin to break down their story. So they're going to break down the story, where things come from, where they come from, meaning are they divorced? Are they an unwed father? What does that look like? I can honestly tell you it's very rare that I get a call from a female or I should say the mother uh-huh. of the child. Uh-huh. I get calls from. Do you get calls from the children? Say, <clears throat> adult children. Okay. Yes. 
I had a call one time from a 15 year old. Wow. And she knew that her mother was not interested in pursuing it. And there was nothing I can do because she's underage, right? Gotcha. So the kids that we work with at Boys and Girls Clubs, sometimes that's a conversation we have. Most times it's not. Adult children, they do call us, and they they are looking for their fathers. Okay. But I can tell you, Shay, they have minimal information most times, mm -hmm. which I think is a testament <clears throat> of mom. Yes, because mom wants mom it that way. Right <laughs> mom, you're not telling your kids the daddy's real name his whole name, you're giving them nicknames. Mm -hmm. um, you're telling them you don't know where he used to live. Um, I have one case where um, the mom was like, well, we slept together, you know, a week after we met. And then, you know, the person that I'm speaking with, he's like, well, you know, you never know what kind of game he ran on, you know, my mom. And I'm thinking, she was a grown woman who maybe she just wanted to have sex with someone after she met him, you know, right. not for a week. <laughs> but we right. have to villainize the man and give this woman a, the victim in the past. past. Mm -hmm. We are grown women. And sometimes we have sex with people that we regret later. And we have to own that truth. And we made the choice and we made the decision. And so that's really, you know, in many ways, that's what we see. And so when it comes to reuniting fatherless children with their dads, the kids come through boys and girls clubs, but they don't always, that's not always a conversation there. Majority of the time, it's not. Most of the time, it's the dad. Shay, I get, I get about 1,200 calls a month mm -hmm. from dads looking for their children and reconnecting with their children. And don't let me be on a radio show or, you know, the other radio shows that I'm on that are nationally syndicated because that number becomes, you know, 1,200 calls in five days. Right. Well, we have to set up um, call centers and things, and people don't realize – there are men looking for their children, and they don't know because they had a breakup. We get mad as women. We change our phone numbers. We move. We do all types of stuff. Mm -hmm. And child support in the courts don't give out your info. They don't give out mom's information. And I know people want to think that that's a thing, but it's not. And um, I, I find it, I find it challenging sometimes because okay. the men sometimes have been laxed because they're, they have a lot of anxiety about the idea of going to court. Mm -hmm. And so we give them an opportunity to get legal representation to help them through that process. And to, we walk them, we hold their hand through that process because we know it's difficult. We know it's absolutely complicated. Wow. And if you are coming from a place of it's a breakup, I know she's going to come with some stuff. And yes, I did walk away. You're nervous. Because you know you made a bad decision. Right, right. So you're trying to figure out how I can circle back. We give them hope that you can circle back. I don't, there's no place in God that we have to pay the price forever for a bad decision. You are 100% right. I'm going to get in the amen corner on that one. Okay, amen. so how, once a, a person has come to you, where does that lead to now? Do you guys get to go to family court? What 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 happens after Someone says, hey, I think I know where my dad is, or I don't know where my dad is. Can you help me find them? Um, where does family court and, and those challenges come into play with the, the fatherless generation? How do you guys help with that part? Because I know I hear all the time, she's getting $2,500 a month, and she's making— and I can't see my kids. Right, and I can't see my kids, and, I'm, and she's making $10,000. And I'm paying 2500 and I have, still haven't seen my kid in two and three years. How do you guys help with that part? There's a difference between paying child support and then in Georgia, legitimating your child and getting parenting time and some type of joint custody. Wow. Men think because they're paying child support, it gives them a right, a legal right, to see their children. It does not. Wow. It gives you the ability and the responsibility to pay your child support. That's it. So you have to go through, in Georgia, the process of legitimation. So what we do is we partner with law firms okay. who will help you through that process. Okay. But if you don't have an attorney to do that, there are counties in Atlanta that I would tell you, I think you could go with pro bono and you'd be just fine. Okay. There are other counties that I would tell you in metro Atlanta that you're going to need an attorney. <laughs> right. It's going to be that easy. Okay. Okay. Each but at least you guys kind of know that. Laws, 
and different processes and okay. different judges. <laughs> wow. Well, <laughs> you, mm-hmm. you, you heard that right there. Okay, well, I don't want to hold too much of your time, but I do want to know, what are you guys doing next week? I know it's Father's Day is coming up. I just saw a poll that you put mm-hmm. out. You said, how am I feeling about Father's Day? You don't want to know how I responded to that to that poll. No, uh, I do. Tell me. But tell, me how, tell me how you respond. I, I, I dread it. You dread it. I dread so it. You're a dreader. Yeah, I'm a dreader. Uh, okay. and then on top of that, you guys have something that you're doing. You're providing a solution. Mm-hmm. The Beyond Fatherless, uh, conference, conference is coming. Tell us all about that. Yeah. Tell us what we can expect, how we can get tickets. I'm super excited about it. Just how you said you dread it. Yeah. I believe there's a lot of people out here who dread it. They have anxiety about it. They're sad about it. There's very few who are going to say happy on that poll. There's mm. some men, a lot of men, and some women who are angry about it. Wow. I decided this year that I was going to do something different, and I'm going to not only help fatherless children, meaning minor children, I'm going to help fatherless adults. Because what I keep seeing even in my reunites is the adults who are the parents didn't have their father. So it's still complicated. It's still got some issues in it because they still have some emotional issues and dysfunction. It's time to heal. Wow. So Beyond Fatherless Conference is for that fatherless son, fatherless daughter, whether you are from a divorced family, you were in foster care, your father died, um, your father was disengaged, he wasn't really the father that you wanted. It's Mm -hmm. time for you to come to Atlanta, to the Lauer Mix Center on Thursday night, which is a totally free event. Talk about the state of the family. And then on Friday and Saturday, it's a ticketed event, and we're going to have you face your past, heal your wounds, and reconcile your relationships because that's what people do not realize about fatherless children. Mm. We can tear up some relationships. Wow. Okay? <laughs> because we're still missing components that we needed from our father. And so what's going to happen at this conference is we have some dynamic speakers. I saw. I'm excited. Oh my I'm going God. to speak. You, you, I've I've you first of all, are gonna, re- I'm sorry. <laughs> I said, say? first of all, you're going to speak. I am going to speak. You guys have never heard me speak in Atlanta. Mm. So it's time to come on Atlanta and tear it up. So I'm going to start the conference and I'm going to end the conference on Saturday. Okay. In between me speaking, you're going to hear from Dina Babel. She is from the Fatherless Daughters Movement. Her and um, another young lady wrote a book called The Fatherless Daughters Project. Her father actually committed suicide. Mm. That's what I'm telling you. We've got components that people aren't ready for, and they don't realize that it's going to be there waiting for them, and it's going to touch them specifically. Then I I added documentaries and short films in there. Mm -hmm. We have a short film called Spit and Anger. That's from Kenneth Braswell, who was a fatherless son. And you're going to see him go through his journey of dealing with his anger and his unforgiveness pertaining to his father. It's an amazing documentary. He wasn't even planning on doing that. He was trying to shoot other fatherless men. And we have workshops. We have workshops for men. We have workshops on co-parenting. We have workshops for single moms to help you own your stuff and unpack your baggage. And on Saturday, I have replaced, unfortunately, I had to replace one of my speakers, but I have added one of Atlanta's own and one of their favorites, Dr. Aldewan Tart. Yes. He's going to help you talk about your relationship stuff. And you know he's dynamic with that. He is amazing. So I added one of the best um, concerning that. We're going to watch The Father Effect. You're going to hear. And this is the thing that I wanted to do, Shay. Mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure the people who were speaking to you had gone through your journey and overcome. I don't want somebody just talking to you, you know, if you're attending. I I wanted people who had been through the fire and understood the challenges. And so that's what you're going to get. They're going to pour out. We're even going to have a balloon release on Saturday where you're going to be able to write your stuff on Friday. I'm sorry. Before you walk out, you're going to be able to write your stuff on there. You're going to be be able to release that in the air and let it go. And so that's what I'm doing. It comes with lunch and, you know, breakfast and lunch and snack. And so you got to go to um, beyondfatherless.com to get all the information on it. Nice. But I can tell you, I am super excited about this. I'm excited. I've never been excited about it. Like, I'm totally excited for you. Um, I'm just amazed that 
well, like I said, you, you saw something, you saw an issue, and you took it by the horns and said, okay, we're going to do something about it. And that's what this is all about, is us being able mm. to have the conversation and, and be able to do something about it. So I really appreciate you. Um, Beyond Fatherless Conference, we can't wait, June the 14th uh, through the 16th. It's a two-day uh, conference, and it looks like it is going to be phenomenal Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And Dr. Tori And Thursday is night be... is, the, is the thing. Because Thursday night is you can come for free. Wow. And you can vent and get your stuff on the table. Because wow. we want to put all of the stuff on the table Thursday night, mm-hmm. 7 to 9. Mm-hmm. You got some awesome panelists up there. You got family law attorneys. You got Dr. Aldewan Tart. You got myself. You got um, Wendell, who's coming from D.C., who's walked this journey. He's writing, or he's doing a documentary right now on Beat Dead Dads. He's changed it around because you want people to see how dads have been getting beat up in the court system. And they're going to talk. Nice. And we're going to break this thing down, and we're going to let you ask questions and vent and tell everything that you're feeling about your deadbeat ex-husband or ex-boyfriend wow. or your baby mama. Wow. <laughs> Have mercy. Uh, well, listen, I don't want to hold you. I know you've got yeah. tons to do before this time. I appreciate you joining Shop Talk with Shay today, and I can't wait till you're back in Atlanta so you can come on in the studio and let's just talk and uh, get to know more about Dr. Tory. And I am so, so, so excited for um, June the 14th through the 16th. Get your tickets. Meet Shop Talk with Shay there at the event. I'll definitely be there Thursday, but I, I, I can't even fathom – uh, having to try to <laughs> walk through my head on um, I, I don't want them to meet me on Friday and Saturday because I'm probably going to be on the floor <laughs> weeping. So yeah. they have a better shot to see me on Thursday, and then they need to walk through their stuff on Friday and Saturday themselves because I'm probably going to be on the floor and weeping and, and get my healing on. So I will um, mm-hmm. talk to you soon, and thank you so much, guys. Don't forget, what's the website again? Um, beyondfatherless.com. There we are. And we are uh, so glad to have you on Shop Talk with Shay today. Bye-bye, guys. Thank you so much, Shay. You're so welcome. Listen, guys, you've heard a lot. And what is going to happen now, you've got to go get your tickets. Go get your tickets now. I'm going to, when we come back, we're going to talk a little more on the back end of another father um, who we're representing on this week's show of fatherhood. And again, this is Sean Smash Jet with Shop Talk with Shay. We'll be right back on The Real 1100. And we are back. It is Sean Smash Jet with Shop Talk with Shay. And we have had a great conversation so far. Um, I am excited because I have one of my huh, one of my heartbeats. Team Caramel is on the line, and he has something, and I should say dichotomy, is on the line, and he has something coming up. Uh, I always love to have him in. Team Caramel, <laughs> how you doing, love? Welcome back to Shot Talk with Shay. Thank you. I appreciate it. Good to be back. Thank you so much for the opportunity. As always, you know, I definitely love to come and uh, and chat with you every time we uh, have one of these events coming up. So thanks again. Absolutely. Absolutely. So tell us, what do you have coming up? What you got going on? What you been doing? How's everything been going? I did um, in the dates and give us all the details. Give it to us. Yeah, so June 9th um, at 595 North Avenue in uh, downtown Atlanta. I'm doing my next installment of Oil Fixation. You know, Oil Fixation is really kind of, I like to call it a live dinner concert series, right? Because you get to come and you can eat and drink and and be entertained. Um, I I have given it the moniker of your uh, Saturday night alternative to typical ATL nightlife. So we've got some amazing um, poets and musicians uh, and vocalists that will be uh, that will be performing. Uh, so again, the event is June 9th. Uh, doors open at seven. Show starts at eight uh, at five nine five. Now, if you've ever been to an oil fixation, you know we always have a theme. Uh, in the past, we've done Beauties and the Beast, where we paired each performer with the male and female performer and had them perform. So this month's theme uh, is oil fixation presents Welcome to Wakanda: The Challenge Day Edition, and I so saw we that. are basically <laughs> going to have you know, the, the Wakanda theme, so get your best 
of African-inspired uh, gear uh, and bring those out. And it's going to be Challenge Day. And so each of the performers will actually be competing against each other. Uh, and the crowd will vote via an app and decide who wins. And the winner will get an extra you know, monetary bonus for their performance. So I'm super excited about this one. Oh, my God. This, y'all, you know, they're going to show out. You do know this dichotomy. You know they're going to oh, come. Oh, yeah, no, I know. You know they're going to, anytime they, ever since, Wak- I mean, Wakanda, ever since <laughs> Black Panther has come out, every opportunity we get to get into some Wakanda uh, uh, theme, anything, people right. come to slay. Like, they yeah, really no, get into I, this. Yeah, so people got their Black Panther outfits and they got the way to the movie and they hadn't been able to wear it back out. There were some people who were like, well, you know, I might be apprehensive to wear it to the theater, but I, I fully expect, you know, they always go above and beyond, um, you know, with the with the outfits uh, when they come to all fixation. I, I expect this to be no less. If anything, I expect this probably to be one of the flyest, freshest ones, um, you know, that I've ever had. And what I love, if you've never been to an oral fixation, what I love about it is the music. They have live music. It is amazing. They yep. have poetry. They have dinner. Um, there is always a little bit of uh, risque, uh, let's see, uh, <laughs> vendors. Yes, that's that's yeah. what we're gonna say. Risque vendors, <laughs> <laughs> and grown. I should say grown folk vendors. How about that? Um, yeah, yeah, that's probably better. That's better. But uh, 595 North is a sexy place as it is anyway. Um, it's very intimate. And so definitely join us. Uh, beat us there because we're going to be there. Shop Talk is going to be in the building. Um, Saturday, June the 9th. Um, doors will open at 8 o'clock and the show will start. I mean, doors will open at 7 and the show will start at 8. Uh, yeah. It, this is a and sexy we start on scene. Time. Oh, they start on time. You know, this, yeah. So, yeah, this, this is not a CP time type of event. We no. will start, we definitely start on time. And you can get your, get your tables reserved, your little section. If you got some girlfriends or just couples, get some, get a couple uh, couples together and bring them and get your little section where y'all all meet up and make this a little date night for you. Um, tables are available. Uh, you got a little VIP left? Is there any VIP left? Yeah, definitely. We have uh, we've got some uh, some VIP single seats and a couple of VIP tables that are that are still available. So we do a big champagne toast for our VIP folks. They actually are allowed into the venue sooner than everyone else. So the door is open for VIP folks around seven, and then everybody else can get in about seven forty. So we make sure that the VIPs are are uh, are. are are feel extra special for coming out to that. And the last thing I want to make sure I mention is that okay. the event, while it's a great time to come out and hear poetry and, and live music and everything else, uh, I started this event really to assist a really close friend of mine, uh, Ian Weeks, uh, and the Hearts and Steel Foundation, who is a father of four, amazing man, amazing husband, uh, who is currently in the fight for his life uh, and looking for a, a heart transplant. And so mm-hmm. recently, um, in addition to the challenge of the heart transplant, he was diagnosed with cancer, uh, and so he is you know, oh, fighting cancer and going through chemotherapy treatments in, in addition to that. So we use this as a fundraiser to help uh, offset some of the financial expenses that he has. Uh, and one of the big parts that has been uh, one of the more successful parts of the fundraiser, we're actually bringing this uh, back is the mail auction. So we will have a mail auction um, at this oil fixation. So, Ooh, you know, definitely get the ladies to come out. <laughs> and most of the money going to a good cause, right? It's, it's, uh, the dates are great and everything, but the money's going to a good cause. So we've got some phenomenal gentlemen uh, that will be auctioned off. And, and word on the street is that uh, I, I might even put myself on the block. But we'll, uh, we'll see how that goes. Oh, my God. Ladies. Oh, oh we're going to have to retweet this uh, immediately. Team Caramel is going to be on the block. Oh, yeah, Team Campbell. Team Campbell, representing to the fullest. Oh, my God. Well, listen, I appreciate you. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. See you June the 9th at 595 North. We can't wait to see you. And uh, I got to figure out what I'm going to wear now. You know, you always, yeah. last time I had on a beautiful red dress, now I got to go find some Wakanda. So, uh, I'm looking forward to it. I know you're going to come with it. Thank you know you. it. <laughs> All right, my love. I will see you again uh, very soon and enjoy and get back here safely. Thank you for calling. Okay, thank you.
All right. Well, guys, that was Dichotomy. Uh, he said a lot. I am very sorry to hear about um, Mr. Ian. Uh, he is just like a really great dude. So Hearts of Steel, we want to uh, give you our prayers from Shop Talk. And I know you are a fighter and I know you will fight. So um, we are sending up prayers immediately for you and we will be there to support you. Uh, get Guys, get your outfits out. Um, we have to do this. We have to support our own. We will buy and send money to Red Cross and everything else, but we will not support our own. So please do this for me. Do this for Shop Talk. And uh, we love you guys. We're going to get our little tails off of this air. Uh, we will see you um, next week. Same time, same back channel. Please share this information. Tell your girlfriends about Shop Talk. Tell your fellas. It's a Friday afternoon at 2 Usually no one's doing anything. You're on your way home waiting for that 5 o'clock bell whistle. So check out Shop Talk every Friday at 2 o'clock. Uh, catch us on all social media during the week. We're always doing something great, uh, like rescuing sex traffic victims like yesterday. Um, we were able to get a young girl yesterday. So a lot of times I need you guys to follow my social media because sometimes I'll put on their pray as we're getting ready to do a rescue. So do that for me. Uh, don't forget to get the books. We have two books out, Shed Light on the Red Light and A Parent's Nightmare, uh, A Guide to Keep Your Child from Being Sex Trafficked. So uh, buy those for me as well. Um, make sure you do that so that we can provide security and also pro provide education for the girls that we rescue. So we will see you next Friday on The Real 1100. It is Sean Smash Jet with Shop Talk with Shay. We're out. Now did you get that? Yeah, girl. Oh my goodness. Shop talk with Shay. Got you a little bit of ratchet. Got a little bit of classy. Come back here every Saturday at 11 o'clock. Matter of fact, come back next Saturday too so I can fix up them edges, baby. Arch them eyebrows or something. <laughs> They friends, girl, you got it. Let them know that everything big. Nail done, hair done, everything big. And my LA girls, let me see your hand.